The content in this video was created for documentary and educational purposes only, so if you're not 18 or older, shut it off right now. And if we disappear, go to CannabisLifestyleTV.com. Now you know we're home growers, but we definitely truly do endorse solid, quality, ethical commercial grows. There's not many that we've seen, to be honest with you. I mean, over the years of checking them out, they seem like a lot of them are just cash croppers. What? Those guys are posers! But recently, it seems like we ran into a quality group of growers, a small group actually here in Michigan called Root Weaver. So whether you're a new grower, an experienced grower, or somebody who's looking to get in the commercial side, I hope that this video is going to be able to bridge the gap from the small grow to be able to bring you into the world of commercial grow and potentially make this a full career for you, on the up and up side, of course. Stay tuned. Like we always do about this time. So if you like videos like this, please do me a favor, smash that thumbs up. Helps YouTube know that maybe you should push this video out to more people, so shouldn't be tripping and hiding it. It's okay, I handled Susan. So when we got to Root Weaver, we immediately noticed that everybody was pretty clean. And I know we're clean too, but everybody had hair nets and gloves and they were tight. And since we're guests, there are precautions where we're at. So we did have to get full conehead suit in and get in there. We started out in the nursery with the youngins. Beautiful setup right away. Gavita lighting, running Gavita HIDs as well as the LEDs. The nice thing about these is they're compatible to be able to be daisy chained together so you can have both together. The room was set up tight, everything from different stations to of course the whole entire room itself from the structure to the way that the room was built. I think overall the way that these guys have things going is definitely thinking long term as well as immediate as well. What can work for a smaller team but as they expand into larger numbers and you know more hands on where this garden can go. These carts right here you'll see soon. Definitely on point. Now in the starting flower room lots of plants and they got a lot of time to stretch yet. Now you see how high the trellis nets are. They aren't necessarily all going to reach up there. Some will but majority of them I feel like are just barely going to touch it. You see in another room it changes up a little bit, but with these particular cultivars, they seem a little bit more low and squatty. Here's those carts I was talking about. Now they set these up totally handmade built carts so that way they could put all their plants on there and move the racks over. When they need to get in between the rows to do maintenance on each plant, it's just that simple. I mean, literally move it to the side, one individual can do it and you could walk through the entire row. This is all being bottom fed. The reason they have to do that is because the simple fact is restrictions. Where they're at, they were concerned about the drainage. Yes, catch this, the drainage because they thought the city may potentially get stoned on that water. That's stupid. <laughs> yes.
Now in the other flower room here, you could see just colas on colas on colas on colas. And if I do remember correctly, this may be one of their runs rooms, but just wow nothing but colas stacked extremely uniform and this is the key thing is when you have a cultivar that you can scale you know the way it grows you grow it the same way it's going to be even and and just perfect so the key thing is, is about utilizing your space with that exact cultivar the other grow may potentially even get more yield but here this is going to be very easy to manicure trim and overall beautiful beautiful flower Now this room was right towards the end of the run. They were about ready to be cut down real soon. Nice and meaty and hearty, just them full spears babies looking beautiful. So after we checked out the grow, we wanted to meet up with the boys and discuss more about their backstory and how they got into the industry specifically. We initially met in Oakland, California, Ponte Oaks today, I'm on to Oaks uh, in 2015, and then got my foot in the door in the industry, and then he reached out to me, and we met, and pretty much met every day together, thinking about the future and how we can start a company like this. We initially wanted to start it in California at the time, but, um, that was right around when the legislation changed. Um, yeah, it got whack out there. <laughs> yeah, it, in my opinion, it became less legal when they legalized it before it was pretty much free market and non-taxed. And then they legalized it recreationally, started adding all these taxes and it became less fun um, and less authentic, I guess you would say. But um, yeah, we've been working on this for quite a while, yeah. dreaming about it. Six and, years. Yep. And then um, I was director of cultivation for large grow in San Francisco. Um, he was finishing up his degrees in plant science. Yeah, I took a break, went up to Oakland for a summer, did the cannabis horticulture and cannabis law seminar degrees, like the three month long each. Yeah. And then I did that in the summer. I was thinking about just staying and dropping out of college. And we were about to buy a house, start growing, make like a like a delivery company like everybody else. Yeah. And sat down and talked to him like that better if we just do this right. Yeah. Just yeah. go back, somebody finishes school, somebody gets the experience, we just come back together later on, boom. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, very good team. So were you guys home growers before? I mean, regardless of loss. Were you I've, home growers uh, pre this? Yeah, I've grown everywhere I can get my yeah. hands on. Growing in my mom's attic. Mm. Uh, anywhere you can grow plant. Yeah. My aunt's attic. Uh, <laughs> the train tracks. Under house. You like my neighbors? <laughs> <laughs> anywhere I can get my hands on yeah. it, try and plant some seeds and get some plants growing. And yeah real grows if you will but yeah anything i could i just loved it and on the train tracks literally I'd walk me and my brother walk about a mile gallon jugs just water them every single day oh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah it just they got sprayed with the mosquito pesticide thing on the train yeah, yeah. Just fried them. <laughs> oh, man. yeah. Oh, so so yeah did whatever i had to do for the plant i love it um i didn't even consume cannabis till i was 17 and uh every day since i tried it I enjoyed it and yeah. respected the plant and pretty much just wanted to grow the plant. Yeah. And it's that relationship you have with the plant, it's very deep to me. Absolutely. It's a yeah. real connection with earth. It's like, you know, yeah. earth thing, like growing plants is the most you could connect with nature in my opinion. Yeah, you really get the, the, the vibe of so mother nature. Cool. You become mother nature. Yeah. You nature. have to listen to her and work yeah. with her. Yeah. Sick. Absolutely. And one thing that we've talked about before is like, you know, there is the prohibition of alcohol and pretty much there was a prohibition of cannabis and alcohol was, you know, eventually became legal. 
we're in the process of marijuana becoming legal, cannabis becoming legal. And uh, in my opinion, you know, our grandchildren will be talking about this. It'll be in the textbooks, you know what I mean? Like, and not necessarily us, but yeah, 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 everyone yeah, right yeah, now. You know, like, just right the now. Whole industry. Yeah. Sick. Like Al Capone, but yeah, yeah. The, what Al Capone did, not necessarily us being that person they talked about, just what people are doing right now. Well, the pioneers. People yeah. will. Yeah, yeah. you, you yeah. feel yeah. like. Sick. And we're not the true pioneers, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. But Inspired by them and creating your own, paving your own way, though, you know, in that yeah. sense. Where, like I said, from the it's companies so that cool. we, we've come across and that we've dealt with, like most of them are a lot larger in terms of staff and a lot oh, yeah. more. Yeah. Uh, Pulled back from the plan. It's literally just yeah. manufacturing. Yeah, don't you know, realize we, we've preached not corporate. I mean, yeah. like saying corporate, but sometimes we're like these questions. Yeah. And these questions, like, hey, talk to me. Yeah, I'm HR. I mean, what, what do you what? Well, and like yeah. any good business, eventually will become a corporation. It, yeah, yeah, it will yeah, eventually yeah. become Inevitable. a brand. That's a it's but it doesn't happen. But the ethics can yeah. stay within the exactly. business. Exactly. You have to get your base matters. first. If you yeah. demand it. Yeah. yeah. So. Was was uh, education or getting into the formal side of schooling really what got you guys into the industry? You think that was the footstep to push from just being home growers to being able to, to network more and, and take this seriously as a business? I guess networking, you actually working in it, and yeah. then me meeting all the professors. I got University of Missouri, plant science, ag management degree, then Oakland, California, those two degrees, and I got London University, graduated in UK with a floral management degree, and then Amsterdam, Netherlands, got a degree there in plant science. Yeah. Came back here, did an oh, online nice. Colorado cannabis course, and actually started a hemp farm over in Bay City. Oh. Okay. And still have that rented out. But yeah. we're trying to build this there. Couldn't do that. Found this place, which we love a lot more in the first place. It's actually, freaking awesome. Yeah, I was on um, scholarship to go to college, and I dropped out after my first year and a half. Um, I went for ag business, but I dropped out because I was in Pennsylvania where it was still legal. And literally, like, I'd ask questions about cannabis because I knew that's what I wanted to do. And literally, everybody's head would turn in the class and look at me like I'm a weirdo. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, you're saying the wrong thing. The professor, yeah, not me. That's tough. Yeah, wouldn't Which, like me. No, X name on the, yeah. the weed. Yeah, yeah, yep, exactly. <laughs> and that that like, about tomatoes. Yeah. <laughs> and so I found um, Oaksterdam University, and I was like, this is what I'm gonna do. Just you know, at least get my foot in the door, and then once I got there, um, yeah, I just started working the cannabis and went with it. Just rolled with the wind. Yeah, damn. First day I got there, hit him up. Well, we talked, kind of networked, you know, social media using it as a tool. Like stalked Oaksterdam's Facebook page, found him, hit him up on Instagram. Day I got there, like off the plane, got there, still a suitcase, hung out with him, like. Three weeks later, I was living in your little ten by ten studio apartment with you. Yeah, coming <laughs> out yeah. every day together. Overlooking Lake Mary, just grinding, starting the dream. Yeah, man. yeah and o- Oakland's a very good place for cannabis. It's so um, I think the Bay life. Area in general is like you know pretty much the center of like all genetics for cannabis. Yeah, not all, like the, not all genetics. You know, really. It's yeah, the melting pot for plants and people. New so yeah. cool. Yeah, and it's because they've had so much access. You know, it's been legal for so long. Mm-hmm. There's been, you know, the OGs, the pioneers, the people who have yeah, had access to it. And yeah, I just really had time to work with it. So I felt like that was something I wanted to be around, that type of culture. You know? Inspiration yeah. is success. You yeah. Be inspired by something yeah. you can't just do. Exactly. That's really a That's passion. That, that cash crop or fucking awesome. mentality. Yeah. You know? yeah. 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 This is one big thing that we believe in is that there is no master grower. Like nah, I've yeah. read so many resumes of people who are, uh, you know, applying for a cultivation job, claim to be master grower. It's like, no, you're not a master grower plant is the master grower yeah we're just helping it grow and two every environment's different every run's different every strain's different right. you have to just be there and be attentive to the plant and cater to the plant to the best of your ability you can be a master of your location yeah you can know your location so well ins and outs you have to do this band at this time and this and this and this but new room new location new strain start over yeah. you just sit yeah. there and observe and experiment and collect data and that's it you see the yeah. same, like that's kind of like the the slogan for fortune growers club is master your garden yeah yeah your yeah. yours and yeah. I mean, you can't come in here and be a master no, of anything yeah. you know where the bathroom is like, yeah, exactly. like, 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 yeah. yeah. the most important part is just being in tune with your cultivating area wherever you cultivate and your plants and be with them every day uh read and react read yeah. the body language react. how how they're yeah pretty much growing their growth rate um blood swelling pretty much everything the whole nine but um yeah you just have to be there so we had an employee once who asked what's the one thing 
what's the one thing to make the best flour? It's like, be there, be there, every, there every, day. every day. But what's the thing though? Okay. You cannot, you, you're yeah. not gonna, it's like, what's, what's the nutrient? What's the one thing though? Yeah. Just play Psytrance, that's all it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> give me the bottle, it's going to make my buds better and exactly. bigger. Exactly. Everybody, Everybody wants the easy, easy way. I'll sell you a bottle, yeah. but it's not going to do anything for point. Yeah. No, but uh, is there, I think, anything that people, when they see Root Weaver, or they, they look at that brand, what do you guys want them to know? It's the amount of love that goes into every individual plant, for real. Yeah. Every plant gets time every single day. We yeah. know them. We see it on the dry rack and know exactly where that plant was in the room. You know, you just, it's just ingrained into you. So big shout out to the homies over at Root Weaver, Blake and Jimmy and all the crew over there. It's really uh, something to see this cannabis industry and community and, and whole vibe just come together uh, in a way that I can appreciate and everybody I think in the community can appreciate. Uh, so be sure to check them out on IG, Root Weaver. Uh, big shout out to Timber for supplying uh, some of the product. And uh, we just appreciate everybody watching. And hopefully we'll be able to make more dope content like this for you guys. As always, stay lifted.